Mala launched her range of representative girls' dolls four years ago. It was modeling which brought her to South Africa, but an entrepreneurial and socially minded nature which saw her setting up this enterprise. One which we're happy to report is flourishing. Mala, the last time we met you had just launched your Malaville dolls. How's that journey been going? Actually, has been an amazing adventure. Since then, I've launched four new dolls. Viv, Lola, Imani, and Alexa. Alexa is actually very special to me because she's actually a doll of albinism. What inspired this creation? Kids of albinism did not have dolls that represented them, and because my brand is about representation in the doll world, I figured I should just design Alexa and give kids of albinism a beautiful doll that represents them. And I see each doll comes with their own unique set of clothing to match their personality. Yes, they do. Every doll has a story. We have flight attendants, we've got a magazine editor, Alexa is an artist, Viv is a photographer. I'm still representing for the creatives in the current collection, actually. Mala designs and makes the doll's outfits as well as her own sheer collection of women's wear. Fashion is clearly one of your many talents and after winning back-to-back -back best dress titles at the Met, you've now started your own line. Well, I am working on a fashion line and winning the Met was actually quite something last year and this year because I love a theme party and this year it was precious metals and I went and I was home and I actually found a gold hat of my grandmother and that's actually what inspired me to make that dress and, and I won it so it was, it was quite something for me. Is there any chance of us getting a little sneak peek of that line? I've actually prepared something special for you for today, but you just can't mess it up, all right? <laughs> so, I'll show you one of the things I'm working on. I started painting on fabric. This is incredible. I love this look, but how on earth did you actually achieve it? All right, I'll show you. This is your spot right here. Okay. okay. Are we just going to go straight in? No. I okay. don't trust you that much, so <laughs> can we practice on some paper first? I think that's a good idea. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, I set it up already for you. At school, this hands-on creative studied building construction and woodwork, aiming to become an architect. Ultimately, architecture's loss was the fashion industry's gain. Top Billing's about to make history <laughs> and become a part of your new fashion line. You yes, ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, let's do this, people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well. History has been made. <laughs> what do you think? Awesome, I like it. I do too. It feels a bit complete now. When do you know that you've finished your creation? That is actually a very tough thing to answer because you always feel like you can add something more to it. So, when I get tired. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired this look? It really is unexplainable, but it's like I just go into this zone, I go into Malaville. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how the name came about. Uh, Malaville is like, you know, my creative space in my mind. So I go into Malaville and I just feel like, you know, I just feel things and I just come out and give it a shot. So listen, we've got an incredibly beautiful model, <laughs> a gorgeous outfit, and I think all we need is a runway now. No, that's all we need. Should we do this? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> After Marla made her first trip to South Africa to work on her modeling portfolio, it proved such a success that she's returned here almost every season for 12 years. Just like Naomi Campbell and Kate Moss, you were also in the right place at the right time and you were scouted for a modeling job while just running day-to-day -day errands. It was actually quite something and it was like, you know, the moment that changed my life and um, got a whisk away to Paris, did a competition for my first time I was on stage and I won a modeling contract. Now I know you're based in Miami, but you're often coming back to Cape Town. What is it about this place that draws you back? It's a beautiful place and I have a lot of work here. My businesses are based here at the moment and it's, it's actually a really good place for models to be as well. Also. So it reminds me of Miami a lot and the reason why I'm based in Miami is because it's very close to home that's in the Caribbean so yeah, Cape Town reminds me a bit of home. She believes in this second home so much that she's invested in opening an Afro-Caribbean eatery at Botanic Social House opposite the company gardens in central Cape Town. Well, I believe you started cooking at the age of seven and already by eight years old, you almost mastered it all together. Is that the reason why you started the restaurant? Um, yeah, I was, uh, my granny was a street vendor and I had to help her all the time. So I mastered grilling at the age of seven. And because I was a very picky eater, they would tell me I should cook my own food. And just with assisting and everything like that, and I love learning new things. So I was able to watch and observe, see how she cooked her stuff and then just took over from there. 
that's good. <laughs> Working in her grand street kitchen after music concerts and sports games made her quite the chef. Okay, so I'm actually going to be making for you my national dish from the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. It's stewed saltfish with boiled green bananas, but we actually call green bananas figs. Figs. Yeah, so it will be green figs and salt fish. Okay, have does it today. taste anything like a fig? No, it does not. It actually tastes like potatoes. <laughs> okay, awesome. So what is the first step? Okay, so the first step is to boil the green bananas. So you need bananas that are extremely green. That has not gone into a ripening room, so they would be extremely, extremely hard. Yeah. And this is just like, it's not part of the dish, but it's plantains. But I just want to show the difference between a banana and a plantain. A the banana plantain. and a plantain? Plantain is like the cousin of banana. Ah, okay. I never Same knew family, but yeah. Let's begin. Yeah, let's do it. Should we do it? Okay. The bananas are already cooking. Have a look. Wow, that smells good. I know. Is that just banana? Just, Can't be. Just the bananas with a little bit of vinegar and salt. It smells like a warm biscuit. I it's know. weird. I know. It's, it's crazy to think that it's actually green bananas. To start this dish, I'm going to heat up some coconut oil because you get like a nice nutty flavor from there. Saute some onions, peppers, and garlic. Uh, for about like, you know, five minutes or so, then you put in the salt fish and then you add the thyme, the chives and a bit of salt, funny enough. Salt fish, you have to remove the salt, but when you're cooking it, you need to add a bit of salt. <laughs> and then, yeah, you just allow it to saute a little bit and that's the dish. It was the Portuguese who brought plantains to the Caribbean. They're also a staple in West Africa and are seldom eaten raw. So the super, super ripe plantains, when you fry them, they'll be very soft because of the sugar content in there. So it'll start caramelizing, but they're actually my favorite and really, really good. Well, I've never tried any of this before, so I cannot wait to get this onto a plate and get it dished. So what is the next step? Next step is eating. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> While green plantains have the flavor of potatoes, once they've fully ripened, they taste more like a dessert. How's that? I love it. It's actually very sweet. Yeah. Like a sweet. sweet chip. It's exactly like a sweet chip. Although saltfish gets its name from how it's dried and cured, it takes on whatever flavor it's cooked in. There's so much going on here right now. The first impression I thought I would get was a salty fish, but mm. there's nothing of the sort. There's so many flavors in here. Yeah. I'm blown away, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Ryle gave it five stars. <laughs>